I, I actually tomorrow I got Graham Linehan or Lineham. Oh, cool! Could yeah, you yeah, tell me about him so I know how to introduce the guy? Oh my god! Yeah, uh, famed like national treasure and famed creator and writer of uh, the IT the IT crowd, Father Ted, and Black Books, which I don't know if you know, but the three TV shows that are widely beloved in the UK. And unlike American TV shows where they have like a whole writer's room writing like 26 episodes of each season or whatever, we, like he wrote it and I'm not saying he did it all single handedly, but in Britain, that means he wrote it. Ah. <laughs> and like he, like he, his, like his hand is in every single episode. Huh. You know what I mean? And yeah. I, I complete, I find him completely infuriatingly infuriating politically, but so super hilarious in his writing he's genius huh. he gets called a turf because he's a feminist and a uh, i don't know what you call it a trans skeptic skeptic yeah <laughs> that's probably the yeah. nice way of saying it right yeah um he but he's very much feminist very much left wing very much anti-right wing well good so that, maybe um, i'm just going to use so that as the intro <laughs> you should you tell him i said that <laughs> is there any, any question that you you'd like me to ask him what the are you doing <laughs> that's what i think every time i see him on twitter <laughs> really yeah no i don't know what i can't see okay. <laughs> apart from that i can't think of anything specifically <laughs> <laughs> okay I'll, maybe i'll open with that so um from a from a british lover of your comedy what the f do you think you're doing <laughs> <laughs> not what do you think you're doing like what are you doing <laughs> Every time. Hi, Ben. Hey, Captain. Linehan. Uh, how are you doing? How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm okay. How's this um, light? It's not great. Uh, do you have like a light in front of you, like a desk lamp or something like that? Just to light your, your visage? Let me see what I can do. Just give me one second. This <laughs> I'm so sorry. Perfect. I wish it... <laughs> I'm sad it's not going to be in the screen. Okay, how's that? Great. I'll just see if there's any books I don't want to be seen to be reading. Is okay, that George no, Carlin? Was... Sorry? Is that a, a drawing of George Carlin? No, that's Bukowski. Oh, okay. But, but it's more because uh, my wife knows I love Drew Friedman, but uh, hmm. he's very good at drawing old men. So. <laughs> old right, men are the thing that? to draw. Yeah. Yeah, they really are. He has a brilliant book called Old Jewish Comedians that's just amazing, you know. Huh. He, he's uh, he's brilliant. And, and he did this thing called uh, that I'd really try and search out called Any Similarity to Persons Living or Dead, which was a fantastic kind of expose of, of, um, of uh, real villains of the 30s, 40s, and 50s, like uh, really? Buddy, Rich, Buddy Rich and things like that. You know, the famous Buddy Rich story about... When he died, do you know this one? No, I don't know that one. Uh, well, he died, and uh, someone said, someone called his wife, and uh, and he said, "Can I speak to Buddy, please?" And and, and she said, uh, 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 "No, I'm afraid Buddy's dead." Then a few minutes later, same guy rang up again and says, "Is, is Buddy there?" And she goes, "No, no, he's he, he's dead. I told you, you know." Third time she gets angry with him. He says, "Why do you keep calling me? You know, I told you he's dead." And uh, he said, uh, "I just like hearing it." <laughs> <laughs> and what's the art so, so horrible anyway yes what's the artist's name again drew friedman the friedman okay. brothers i think did the any similarity book well thanks rapper. for joining me in the, in the middle of your your in between twitter storms i guess i know i know it's yeah thank you are we are we going straight away or are we do, do i just want to know yeah i mean i i i edit and I, I usually I'll just start oh, running and then I'll cut right in whenever it gets interesting right. for people. So okay. I can okay. I can take out anything um, uh, that's uh, compromising. OK, um, lovely. Lovely. Uh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm thank you for uh, interview, interviewing me. I think you're right. I think uh, I think uh, Twitter, you know, my wife says this as well. Twitter isn't the right place to wage these mm. battles, you know, and it's only when you speak about things that people can see you're not acting in bad faith or yes. whatever so yes. so yes let's do it
Yeah. So you, um, well, okay. So there's the topic at hand, which is you're taking a stand for women. Basically, I, I would rather frame it that you're taking a stand for women rather than against um, any given group. But uh, yeah. of course, you're standing against a force that's going on, but you're standing for women. And that that kind of came to prominence in the last few months, right? For me, it started around summer. Uh, it started before that. There was a kind of um, origin hmm. story uh, years before that, which was I did an episode of The IT Crowd, uh, my comedy show, which yeah. featured um, one of the main characters uh, falling in love with a, a woman who used to be a man. And hmm. uh, my joke in it wasn't very strong. It was simply that the, the it was a, she was the perfect boyfriend or girlfriend because she uh, still had all these kind of male pattern behaviors and mm. and 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 uh, the the character being such a macho guy this was a perfect person for him but it wasn't a great joke in that sense because um, you know it was it was it, it was okay it had a few funny moments but um, but the upshot of it was that I realized that the um, I, I started to get a taste of how extreme and angry the activism was around around mm. the subject. Uh, it immediately just got called transphobic, and and uh, the ending, which again came from a came from a, a, a cheap place, uh, uh, was um, a fight uh, between the two of them. And uh, I just wanted to recreate a a, a kind of. Uh, matrix type battle in a sitcom because i didn't think you saw that a lot and i thought it would be fun uh but of course this got interpreted this got portrayed as uh him beating up a trans woman you know oh, okay. so you know it was <clears throat> it was it was problematic for all sorts of reasons and yes. i i definitely accept that and i and i I'd, uh, i wouldn't go mad trying to defend every aspect of that episode Mm -hmm. But um, but at the same time, I think people should be able to laugh at themselves, and I I think that you know uh, the the scale of the reaction to it was was the first thing that told me something was odd going something odd was going on, and then after that, for years, I would just get constant little uh, things every so often, especially like when I wrote to artists because I'm a big comics fan. But if I wrote to a comics fan, I remember once I wrote to a comics fan. Or a comic artist, and I said, "Oh, I love your, I love your cartoon, or whatever." And 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 they replied, uh, "Sorry, my cartoons are not for transphobes," you know. Okay. And I was like, "Oh, okay." okay. Uh, and and so and so this kind of trickled through for a while, and 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 because it was happening, I kind of thought, "Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna look into this. I'm gonna I'm gonna see, you know, what what there is to all this. I'm going to investigate a little bit." And the more I looked into it, the more I realized was. The bar for being a bigot, according to these people, was very, very low. Hmm. You didn't have to do anything to to be considered a bigot, you know. Um, uh, and the things that were being considered bigotry were it was very worrying, you know. There were things like discussing women's rights, insisting that um, I inclusive language uh, uh, be used, which was actually shouldering women out of certain discussions. Hmm. Um, insulting phrases like you know uh, my favorite was amnesty ireland who i worked with uh on the abortion campaign um uh you know very closely and then when when they passed abortion uh amnesty tweeted a huge victory for pregnant people you know so um i found all this very worrying because as far as i'm concerned there you, you cannot argue that the most vulnerable group in the world historically and globally is women you know they are um they get the shit end of the stick wherever you are in the world there was a great quote i read recently um someone said uh, men agreed to be ruled by other men as long as all men ruled all women you know and it, that aspect of the uh the patriarchy is something that i saw this argument actually inflating and and it, and I saw the, the the tendrils of the patriarchy coming into this world and 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 wreaking a little bit of havoc, you know. Uh, so yeah, so I just I just I, I and and then after and then around um, summer I was recovering from an operation and I didn't have any work on, so I thought, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna 
jump into this with both feet, I'm going to really start talking about it and I'm not going to stop. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was literally uh, recovering from my operation and, and uh, you know, I think I was on morphine. So there was a sense that there was a sense that uh, the pain, I didn't, I wasn't quite feeling the pain of some of the reactions coming in okay. when I initially started tweeting it, you know, so that kind of emboldened me further. And, and, uh, and then I got a message from Parker Malloy of Media Matters, who, who basically just was one of the first of many who started saying, shut up, stop talking about this. You can't talk about this. You're not allowed, you know? And I was like, at, by this stage, I was getting very uncomfortable because the, the morphine was wearing off. So I, I, I said, look, I, I'll talk about this at a different time or something. I, I don't really want to talk about it now because I'm recovering from an operation. But yeah, lots to talk about, whatever, you know. But no, kept pounding out the same thing. Shut up, shut up, shut up. So finally, I, t- I, I said, fuck off. You know, I I'm, I'm literally told you that I'm, I'm recovering from an operation. And, and then I kind of got out of that. And I looked at my replies. And one of them said, because uh, I'd been tweeting about my cancer. And one of them said, I wish the cancer had won. And I kind of thought... Maybe I should turn off reply. <laughs> maybe, maybe I shouldn't be reading this in the week mm. after the operation. So I did a, I did what I think is probably the most fate, fateful thing of this whole story for me, which was I turned off replies for people who weren't following me. You know. Okay. Okay. So now I don't see any of the pushback against what I'm saying, uh, ex- sure. unless it's from someone who's following me. So when people would come to me and go, oh, you got a, you're getting a really hard time on, on Twitter, I just think, I just say, well, no, I don't, I don't see it. So it's fine, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, occasionally a couple of things bubble up that are defamatory or whatever, and I, I ask people to take things down when they're, when they're not true and so on, but generally I don't see the worst stuff. And it was yeah. that decision that because they couldn't shame me and they couldn't they couldn't insult me and they couldn't do you know what i mean they 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 couldn't do all the things they do to everyone else to get them to Mm. shut up um so i didn't shut up and uh yeah so that's 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 where i am now really (laughs) without that feedback uh how do you know whether or not you're making the right formulation like how, how do you know how to sculpt your message in order to to make it um as pointed and and poignant and effective as possible. I don't know. There's something about the there's something about people following you that kind of um, it just assumes okay. that whenever you, whenever you do get um, a negative thing back at you, it will be by someone who has cared enough at least to engage with you to that extent that they follow you. The people who don't follow me, who are seeing a tweet out of context or whatever whatever it happens to be, or it's come. Uh, it's come third or fourth or fifth hand from someone like Parker Malloy, who t- uh, someone told me, got in touch, and they said Parker Malloy is going around our building, showing your DMs to people and asking them to stop following you. You know, mm. but those kinds of people, I don't really need them. <laughs> you know, like, I don't need their comments um, because uh, they're not engaging with the whole argument. And if you, okay. if you if you do follow me on Twitter, you'll see that I've always been consistent um and i've said the same simple things you know it's not about trans people it's about trans activism i don't misgender people deliberately unless i genuinely believe they're not trans but are just the huge amount of chancers that are Mm. kind of glomming onto the trans movement you know um Mm. uh vexatious litigants you know of both you and I know, and if we mention their names, we'll be sued or taken off Twitter. Uh, um, pedophiles, you know, who are trying to get close to to children, and uh, as anyone in social services will tell you, they will do anything to to get into that. So if if there is something like if something like self ID is introduced, of course they will try to take advantage of that because they try to take advantage of everything. You know, yeah. um, and basic misogynists, you know, people who are just think this is a fantastic chance not only to to shit on women, but to do so while being lauded by progressives, you know, mm. and, and, and it's those three groups. And there are examples of them out there. Um, and you, you as I say, if you name them, you get sued. Um, but they are, for me, uh, in danger of destroying a lot of things that. Uh, the LGBT movement can justifiably be very proud of. Yeah, yeah, and and also the women's rights movement too. 
yeah. to a certain degree. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, the women's rights movement, I mean, they don't care about that, but they, they should, they would hopefully, care, progressives would hopefully care about the LGBT movement being, being destroyed. The women's rights movement, it's just extraordinary. I saw your interview with Kathleen, and as she says, the lack of imagination amongst people that they can better imagine um, what what a trans person might be going through than what a woman might go through. You know, mm-hmm. it's a very it's a very fair point, and I have seen this um, play out. The whole idea that cis women are are somehow these great inheritors of privilege, you know, that puts them below uh, anyone who says who says they're trans on the on the totem pole of suffering is bullshit because as i say historically and globally women are the ones who suffer most in this world you know <laughs> anyway so sorry this, I'm a no please do but this form of communication is this the first time that you've really basically dived into this like sort of activism or, or approaching a topic this way because you, you got your you made your your name through comedy and through drama and this is a totally different form of communication is it do you do you see yourself uh, being as effective with this than you have been with comedy um well i mean as far as this i think the most important things i've done on twitter were the abortion fight in ireland and uh and this you know and i would actually argue that this is almost you know more important in ways because because this will affect women all over the world for years, you know. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't know how. I, it's a bad. It's a bad way. It, it, it's bad in so many ways. I mean, you know, Twitter is policing uh, is policing women now to and, and feminists now to such an extent, and feminist allies to such an extent that it's really hard to get um, to get the point across, you know. And you couple that with Twitter's terrible broken reply system where people think they're being talked to when they're not and 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 mm. you know and the terseness of twitter exchanges the fact that people come on board in a combative way uh it all adds up to it being a, a bad medium mm-hmm. for all this but in other ways i don't know i've i've made so many lovely friends people used to say to me do you know any trans people and and the answer used to be uh kind of no and now, you know, there's there's at least, I don't know, you know, 12 trans friends I can count, you know, yeah. Kinesis, who you know, and 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 and, and uh, 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 Christina Harrison and Debbie Hayton. I mean, some of these people I haven't met, uh, but some I have. And, and you know, it, it's been lovely. It's been lovely. Yeah. I mean, in, in many ways, it's been I, I've just met. So the, and I'm really the people I've met through this, I really value them because they're genuinely brave people you know i always think of uh i always think of um uh 12 angry men you know there's a line at the start of 12 angry men where the old guy who's the first guy to come around to henry fonda's argument he says it's not easy to to stand up against a group of people who all think you're wrong it's not it's not easy to do that and that's what all these people are like you know they 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 refuse to just go along with uh, the dogma and and whatever the ideology tells them uh, to think, and they think for themselves, and they suffer for doing so. I know mm-hmm. three, I know three people who've been visited by the police. You know, uh, oh, some, some yeah. There's a piece I'll, I'll share with you uh, about this uh, uh, that Katie Herzog wrote in the um, in the Stranger. Um, uh, but but you know, it it it. it it takes it. It take it takes its toll, but it's but it's but oh but, and no, sorry, that wasn't my argument. My argument was um, uh, uh, yeah, all these people they they do this despite that, you know, despite that um, uh, uh, the pushback uh, push- that they're getting, uh, yeah, and the harassment yeah. that they get, yeah. And, and I really, I really admire them, and I want to, yeah. and I. I just feel like I've made some amazing friends from it. So, so Twitter yeah. is kind of working the way it used to work for me, and that it's it's connecting, connecting me with, with great people. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see that there will be in the next month or year like a a, a change? Do you think we're we're headed towards a change, or or do you think that the trans rights activists have so much momentum that they'll be able to shape society in their image um, with? Uh, 
I, without I, us being able to stop in them. Or I don't know. There, were, there have been times where I've thought that this was so monolithic uh, that I that it's actually been a, felt a little bit scared. You know, it, it feels like like uh, you know when when you see women being silenced to such an extent. When you see someone like, uh, let's call him Baltimore, that's what I'm calling him at the moment. But when you see Baltimore being able to sue women for not waxing his genitalia and getting away with it, that's when you start to get a little bit frightened. Because it's like, when are people going to start talking about this? When are they going to start um, fighting back against this? And, and, and then you see someone who, who, you would, who should know better. Uh, a good example over here is a Scottish... Um, a Scottish uh, politician, I can't remember her name, she's very young, and she said something like, um, if you're concerned with genitals at, at, your, at your swimming baths or, or, your, or wherever it happens to be, then you are part of the problem, you know? Mm-hmm. I think it was Mary Black, I want to say, maybe that's wrong, but anyway. And she made the speech saying that these women were part of the problem, you know? A lot of these women are vulnerable. Some women don't can't be in a room with male-bodied people. Some of them are rape survivors or abuse survivors. You know, some of them are in prison, and they're in pr- and, and women who are in prison are more likely to have been the victims of male uh, violence. You know, so f- for her to say uh, you're part of the problem to the, to these women, it's like it's like she uh, up until that point, I thought she was great. I thought mm. she was so impressive, such a mm. such a, such a firebrand. You know, and then I saw that and I thought. Well, she's not. She's just another one of these unthinking, you know, automatons. You know. Okay. And uh, yeah, so it's so it sometimes gets scary, and I, 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 I do, it, it's still going to take a lot of work. But I think there's a few high-profile cases happening at the moment that are going yeah. to implode. Okay, so there, there's the 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 radical trans rights activism that is has a lot of power, a lot of influence. It's it's acting in authoritarian ways. It's it's shutting down criticism. I mean, I see it online a lot, especially on Twitter. Like, there's this whole slate of rhetorical devices that they have to uh, diminish any sort of person that goes against them, and then they'll block you or they'll have you muted or whatever. Um, there's that. And there's dealing with that. And then what I've been trying to showcase is that there, there are actual trans people who are much more than just their, their transness, right? They're, they're much more than just that category. And they have a, a, a wide uh, variety of views on that. And they, th- this is a, a category that, that society needs to figure out what to do with. Because physically, our buildings have, uh, we have different bathrooms for the sexes, and, and the, the things that the trans rights activists are using to exert their power, are there, there's real issues there. And, it's, yeah. and so beyond dealing with the radical aspects of this, what do you think needs to happen for society in order to go forward with, with figuring out, and I don't mean this in a bad sense, but figuring out how to deal with, with this group and deal with them in, in the right way um, to their benefit. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. I, I, well, you know, th- there's, there's a, first of all, well, there's a couple of principles that have been, uh, that have been, uh, taken as a baseline to this argument and they need to be um uh if not if not if not rejected then at least there needs to be an understanding of 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 why they might be flawed one is um taking the courtesy of trans women or women as a literal truth you know that is not going to let the argument proceed any further because there are a lot of women who will never accept that, and neither should they be forced to. Okay, um, it's a it's a courtesy, and it's a valuable one, and it's one that I think could be returned to, even by some of these women, you know, who are currently very angry. Uh, uh, if if this kind of demanding entitlement kind of goes down a little bit, you know, so that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is no is the no debate idea. You know, you see that you, that's another bedrock of all this. Yeah. There is yeah. no debate. And whenever whenever they talk about the debate, the, the debate is framed as you are debating my right to exist. Yes. No one is debating that. No one is debating that. Women are debating whether some of the things that are being advanced in the name of trans ideology are taking away resources from them. Mm. And they obviously are. You know, Rachel McKinnon, the cyclist. She has taken away net medals and places in races from women. 
Um, uh, you know, um, uh, even something like gender neutral bathrooms. You know, it's very rarely men who suffer because of these these mm -hmm. things. You know, this. You know, you, you've you've gone to the loo at a public event. You've seen the line outside the ladies that extends down the fucking road, while the men are just sa sauntering in and out. You know, <laughs> yeah. of the men, and you're saying you're going to take away more places from them from yeah. the woman's side. You know, uh, yeah. Pippa, you know, best example, I, 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 the best example of all this is Pippa Bunce. Uh, Pippa Bunce is a, is a UK um, uh, and is considered trans, but Pippa Bunce is, is not trans. Pippa Bunce is a cross-dresser. Uh, half, half, half of the week, uh, Pippa Bunce identifies as a man. The other half, they identify as a woman, you know? Yeah. And as someone pointed out, you can bet they're getting a male salary you know hmm. so basically everyone in, in that person's place of employ, employ has to go along with this th two or three days out of every week you know and they got a place on a 100 women in business list you know mm -hmm. i mean th again a place that should have been taken by a woman you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know there's just uh, the, there are limited resources in the world and uh mm -hmm. women have to there's all these things in place to make sure that women get half which is which is which they're which they're entitled to because they're half the population you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and those and those things are being chipped away at certain things all women shortlists sports um yeah. uh, private spaces these are all being chipped away yeah. at you know and you know it, there's just got to be a little bit of an admission that yes okay maybe that has been happening okay. and if that yeah. kind of happens i really think it, the conversation can move on to a good place yeah. okay so it, you can't you're open to a negotiation or like you wouldn't be so up in arms if there was a negotiation that was held in good faith um yeah and i would back out of it completely i would back out of it completely if we're if women were allowed to talk about it you know, mm. I don't want to be doing this. In fact, I think in many ways I'm a bad person to do this because I've got I've got a temper and I'm a sour comedy writer, you know. <laughs> and and so when people are rude to me, I just give them both barrels, you know. And people are are, are, huh. are often rude to me about this about this conversation. They, it, most people open up the conversation by accusing me of being a bigot. There's one journalist over here, Owen Jones, who's kind of freely called me. He called me a virulent transphobe, you know. Mm -hmm. And 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 you say, oh well, no, but what about all these trans people whose voices I'm amplifying? Doesn't matter. So somehow they don't really count, you know, mm -hmm. because they mm -hmm. don't agree with the mainstream bullshit, woman erasing fucking ideology that is <laughs> that is currently uh, taking everything over, you know. Yeah, yeah. Do you do you see? Is this the end of comedy for you? Can you can you bring comedy? Can comedy do anything, any work here, yeah. or is, uh, is the conversation gone so far that that comedy is off the table because of the way that yeah that people no, come I, down against? Well, that's a great question. I mean, one thing I said in my in my uh, interview with Derek Jensen is is there's a there's this uh, uh, pedophile who 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 uh, claimed to be a woman. Um, and, you know, I highlighted that story and everyone said, oh, you're saying all oh, trans people are pedophiles. No, I wasn't. Here's the reason I highlighted that story. Jacinta Brooks, who was the person in question, uh, as I often describe them, looks like Bill Sykes from Oliver. You know, it's like mm -hmm. a thuggish guy, you know, and he's called himself Jacinta Brooks. There's no no evidence of any form of transitioning beyond the name change. And all through this article in the Metro newspaper, he was referred to as a she, you know, and this is a pedophile you know, who, 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 you know, was, was trying to attract a little girl by pretending to be a little boy. Right. And all through this piece in a, in a, in a, in a respected newspaper, he's called a she. Now that's outrageous. That's an insult to women and it's an insult to trans people, you know, mm -hmm. but because the current ideology is what it is and, and, and the press's guidelines are what they are. This insult is repeated all through this piece. You know, mm -hmm. so um, so uh, uh, so anyway, as far as your question goes, the it's very hard to do a comedy if to do comedy in a world where a fundamental kind of bedrock of reality is has been uh, shattered or they're attempting to shatter it. You know, like like um, you see a man who's obviously a man 
and a physically intimidating man, a man who is a, a predator mm. and an abuser and a paedophile and, and a rapist like Karen White. You see this man and, and you're told, no, it's not a man. That's a woman, you know? Whatever, whatever impact that has upon mm. crime statistics, uh, upon the way women are judged and treated in society, doesn't matter, that's a woman. Now, I can't accept it. I just can't accept it because because that world is a world in which day is night and two plus two equals five and mm -hmm. and it's impossible to do comedy unless you're starting from a basis of reality. You really? Know? So, so so yeah. So re, uh, comedy in in one respect, comedy is a way of of uh, working against reality. You need something strong and stable to work against or work within. Yeah, yeah. You need you need a you need a the, the background of comedy. An expectation. It's, it's, yeah, the background of comedy is a kind. There's a black background against which the, the black background of reality against which the white of comedy can stand out. If that makes sense. Huh. Okay. Yeah. So, and 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 if that if that if that um, uh, hmm. uh, black background starts to turn white, <laughs> hmm. then yeah. how can you see the comedy? <laughs> huh. I know that's a, that's a bit of a strangled metaphor, but that's kind yeah. of what, what it's like, you know. Yeah, and. Um... So what if if you don't if you can't use comedy what are you left with just anger uh, I mean like, like yeah, yeah, what, you, what emotions you've seen, can you you've seen my Twitter feed you know <laughs> it's, it. you know it's it's hard to be funny when you're angry you know and I'm really angry at the moment I've been called a, I've been called a bigot my wife has been uh, doxxed by by, mm. by mm -hmm. I I've, I've had visit a visit from the police uh, and a oh, call. Really? A phone call from the police. Yeah, yeah. You know, all these things have happened because I've refused to shut up. And yeah. and and I, and when people have said, I've said, oh no, there's no no one does what you're saying they do. And then I point out people who are doing it. That's when I get in trouble. That's when I get a visit from the police or or whatever huh. happens. Because it's, it's targeted harassment or something like that. Yeah, yeah. There, there, there's 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 two individuals in the UK who are using the police as their own private goon squad. You know, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and and they are making absolute fools of police around the country you know yeah. there's there's i i know one woman uh there's a guy adrian harrop he's a he's he's a guy over here and one woman was well, he accused of homophobia got a visit from the police while she was having tea with her lesbian daughter you know uh -huh. um uh, uh and <laughs> you know a lot of the other people who have been sued by uh uh the kind of people who are suing me are trans you know so you know, one of my friends in Norwich, Melissa, who is oh, a trans, okay. who is a trans woman, she's 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 being sued by the same person. You know, so, so so there's something in the law that's being exploited here because I know there, I've seen stories yeah. about like like uh, for whatever reason, uh, British police are spending resources policing people's internet uh, communications and 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 making yeah. statements to that extent. And and there's certain uh, kind of hate speech laws that are now in effect and and are being uh, employed. Do you think that there's a fundamental flaw in the law that it's allowing it to be? Abuse no, because, because because as I, I as I've often pointed out, I didn't get arrested. So something's working. Something's working okay. I didn't get arrested. Okay. I didn't even get my my warning that I got by the phone call. We with my lawyers looked into it, and I it wasn't an official warning. You know, it's just mm. it's basically the police come in. Someone comes in and rants at them, and they think, well, to stop this person ranting at them, I can make a phone call, and that'll be it. You know, yeah. but huh. but because I had just gotten over my uh, operation and I had a bit of time to really devote myself to this, I just thought, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not taking it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, I've written a letter to the police saying, you tell me what objective um, uh, criteria were used uh, before the visit uh, was announced. Can you tell me how that all happened and stuff? And I'm not letting go of it until I get an answer. You know. Because yeah. it was, because a visit from the police, even though it turned out to be nothing, is 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 you know it's it's stressful, you know. Yeah, still worrisome. So, so so as for the hate speech laws, I don't know. There are there are some people who um, were comparing me to to a uh, thing. I I I mean you know there's a guy over here. I don't know if you remember the Nazi Pope story. He's a guy oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Dankula. Yeah, Count Dankula. Yeah, and he's one of these fucking Pepe Pepe guys, you know, and, and, and everyone's <laughs> acting like he's a free speech hero. He's just a hack, you know, and, and, and I just laughed at it because I thought, 
I thought it was funny that his joke was so bad. It, it got a visit from the police. You know, I yeah, thought yeah. that's a sign that you maybe shouldn't be in comedy. You know, <laughs> when mm. your material is is so bad, someone makes a phone call, then, you know, maybe you should consider another line of work, you know. But I didn't say he should have been arrested or anything like that. I never yeah. said that. But don't I you just, see that that could be turned against you, like, to affect, like, like wrong think kind of Oh, it has, it has been. It absolutely has been. But at the same time, you know, there's a reason why uh, mm. you're not allowed to walk around shouting, you know, uh, uh, hang the Jews or whatever it happens to be, you know. Mm -hmm. This guy, mm -hmm. this guy just got, found out a, a way of saying gas to Jews a lot of times, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's like there's a reason why it might be a good idea that people don't say things like that, you know. Well, I don't know. But I mean, couldn't the same argument be made uh, to stop people from saying that women, trans women, are not women or trans yeah. women are men? I mean, yeah, like if you just if you amp it if you if you don't. I, I mean, I don't know, like, that that's the free speech absolutism says we're not going to police speech because once we start with one thing, people in power can twist that into enforcing uh, 2 plus 2 equals 5. Like, that's the natural outcome of that. But you, you think yeah, that there's some I, wiggle room or difference? I, I, well, I just think, I mean, I think you just look at the way reality has been bent by, hmm. by Trump and by, by hmm. people exercising their, uh, you know... It's not so much a free speech, but a free speech issue as uh, uh, money, money, money incentive, uh, kind of capitalism incentivizing uh, uh, speech that's dangerous. You know, like mm. like for instance, the, the the free speech grift, as far as I can see, is mm -hmm. uh, say a bunch of terrible things get sued or, or get in trouble, and then you open up your GoFundMe, you know, about, uh, you know, legal hmm. fees or whatever it happens to be. Um, hmm. uh, Count Dankula, for instance, uh, uh, got something like over £100,000 uh, yeah. to fight an appeal, which I haven't heard anything of since, you know. So, you know, um, it, it's hmm. really it's really the monetizing of, I think I think America has a free speech problem the same way that you could possibly say that we have a free speech problem, except America's one is different, you know, and mm -hmm. the result are things like Infowars and a president who, 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 who simply, who simply lies all the time and, and it doesn't seem to harm him, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know it's, it's kind of a, it is a difficult one and it's a, it's a, it's yeah. an interesting, one. it might be a different conversation possibly. Yeah. Yeah. It might be. I just, I, it just seems like it might overlap at some point with, with the speech that you are trying to uh, voice. Like yeah. if, if people are allowed to, to say that words are, ira uh, are damaging, then why, which words are damaging and, and aren't, if, if enough people claim that your words are damaging them and erasing their existence, then you don't have any, a hill to stand on, let alone die on. Right? Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. Know. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I mean, the thing about it, though, is, is where does the, you know, where does the, where does the, uh, where do these dictates come from, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and in, in this case, the dictates seem to come from uh, a number of different sources, um, they seem to be made up as they go along. Some of them. Um, uh, they're, 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 I, I genuinely believe that that some of the language of gender, of, of queer theory and gender ideology, is deliberately obtuse, or not obtuse. What's the word? Obscure or yeah, uh, obscure. obfuscated, yeah. so that people can never really catch up with what they're supposed to say and what they're supposed mm -hmm. to do. And stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that's mm -hmm. a slightly different. I, I think that's a slightly mm -hmm. different position to. To saying to people, okay, don't say don't say gas to Jews on your YouTube channel. All right, <laughs> you know, I think, that, I think that's slightly different, hmm. you know. So, but what I, do you... I know, know where you're coming from, and, and I, I, you know, free speech is one of those things. I just see it being hmm. manipulated by certain yeah. bad actors, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's one of the things that we always have to be aware of, like that bad actors will be manipulating everything and designing a system that that keeps bad actors out is not possible. So we kind of have to be constantly vigilant. Um, and, and it's hard to, it's hard to 
it's hard to really tell if somebody's coming from a bad place when all you see are little, little tiny snippets of them or even just videos of them um, and yeah, you don't have a, like a long uh, relationship with them. What do you think yeah. about going forward? Um, do you, have you been making connections? Do you, do you think that there's a, a coalition forming um, that you're Sorry, a part of? Or? I just got to check the time. Hold on a sec. Yeah, you, uh, we have like my, five. My, my, my phone's just, just died. I thought I was charging it. Hold on a sec. Oh, shit. I don't know what that means. Um, sorry. Uh, can you ask that again, Benjamin? I'm so sorry. Yeah, we have, we have about five minutes, and then uh, you can do your have, social thing. We have ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just wondering, um, what, do, what are you thinking about... I don't about... mind picking this up at a different time as well, so don't... Okay. You know, if you, if you want to do that, then I'm happy to. Okay. Um, <laughs> but my, my question is, uh, what do you think going forward? Um, is there a coalition forming? Do you think that... Um, that things are headed in the right direction or about to be or uh, in the UK. Yeah. It looked, it looked to me like Megan Murphy got a really good turnout at her recent, uh, her recent event in Canada. Um, uh, I, I do notice that a lot of women are standing up and are, are feeling braver about it. And, mm. and, you know, that's all very inspiring. Um, uh, and and I don't know, but there's things that that do depress me. You know, like there's there's people who still don't see it. They just don't see it, and they mm. see it as being a, a, a form of bigotry. Um, mm. uh, no matter how many times you say no, it's certain aspects of the ideology, or it's certain aspects of the activism, it's certain aspects of this or that, they, they don't, they, they just don't see it. It's like everyone, there's a certain kind of mm. strata of, 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 you know, genuinely decent people who, who seem to have a kind of flip switch that as soon as it comes up, they, they feel they, they get into this kind of mode where everything makes them uncomfortable. I saw this guy getting into a conversation with a group of women recently, and they were very politely saying, well, no, because this, because that, and they were trying to uh, trying to put their point of view across. And he said about a thousand times in this thread that I saw, he said, he said I'm going to stop talking about this now. <laughs> he tried to get out of it because, <laughs> because he was so uncomfortable. And, and I just think that a lot of people don't, don't, uh, uh, a lot of people don't like to approach it because the cognitive dissonance is is very very painful you know yeah. they they yeah. want to do the right thing they want to support trans people but certain trans activists are telling them that any form of debate is bigotry you know any form of 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 women fighting for their rights is bigotry um uh, uh the definition of of woman adult human female is somehow bigoted you know yeah you know that that i i think that Oh, I can't again. I can't remember how I began the sentence, but 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 I do I do I do get um, uh, hopeful about. Um, oh yeah, no no no. I know. I was telling you about the um, about the guy. Uh, so yeah. So you know, he he his discomfort was such that every argument he 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 saw, he he had to say, "I'm backing out. I can't deal with this." You know. Yeah. But fair play to him. He stayed. He stayed in the conversation. You know. <laughs> yeah. Is there a way to, how do you, how do we, uh, break cognitive dissonance? Like you by just keep on throwing right stones? By always being God, by doing the right thing. But, but if you're a, fe if you say you're a feminist, you support women, you know? And, and if you see that they're, they're getting a, the rough, uh, are getting a rough time of it, you, you, uh, you do something about it. It's, it's very easy. You just have to be consistent. You know? I mean, I mean, I have, I have, <laughs> I, I have, very little cognitive dissonance on this. I got a little bit today when I was speaking to a, a, a trans woman who I used to know from years back uh, uh, called uh, Kat, and uh, uh, and we sp and she spoke a little bit about how happy she was that she didn't go or, or how how she wished she had delayed puberty and all this sort of stuff, and and I got a little bit of insight into uh, the nature of the problem for uh, uh, trans people on an issue. Yeah, on an issue that I'm very, very, I'm very, very invested in, which is which is this idea of early intervention, uh, early affirmation, uh, uh, giving kids uh, uh, blockers to to uh, delay puberty and stuff like that. That is is stuff that I I will continue to fight against uh, for the for the wider group of people. Obviously, there are individuals within the group who who 
that might well be the very thing for them. But in the mean, until the studies are in that says how many of these people are actually trans and how many people might just be going through a stage and how many people are just unhappy kids and how many are autistic. Apparently, there's a huge number of autistic um, kids who, who are self-diagnosing as trans. Um, uh, once those kind of studies are in, then we can actually have a conversation about it. But until then, we cannot let people like Mermaids over here, which is which is a charity that Kathleen told you about, um, yeah. uh, base their decisions on ideology. You know, yeah. we need to get we need to get scientists, academics. We need to get people talking about this. You know, yeah. and and that's not going to happen until some of the uh, violence directed towards women is uh, eradicated. Okay, all right, and so that's that's the that's the next step then to, to stand up until the facts are in until yes like... I, yeah and stand up until women can speak you yeah. know and, yeah. and and at that stage when i feel when i feel that 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 women can speak about it and that there's a real conversation going on um then i'll mm. i'll back I'll, i'm hoping i can back away <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>